All right, guys, officially uh, welcome to our EDIC meeting uh, here on uh, uh, Wednesday, excuse me, Tuesday, March 8th. Um, uh, today's agenda item is one item, and that, that is to go through our uh, ED, EDIC ARPA general request. Uh, hopefully you guys have already got uh, a copy of that. Uh, what I wanted to do is open up, uh, and I have I have to go to the airport this morning. I'm leaving uh, for a few days, so I do need, I have a hard stop at around 9.15 or so. So if it does go that long at, at one point, um, one of you guys can take over uh, for me if, if it goes to that point. So just as a recap, as you guys may know, some of you were on the call, some of you weren't on the call. Uh, when we had our uh, meeting uh, several weeks ago with the EDIC, excuse me, the uh, uh, Town Council ARPA subcommittee, um, we went through our items, uh, but they did push back on the, our request for uh, engineering renderings and, and, and planning um, uh, items for Southstein Highway and Berlin Turnpike. Um, they said, focus more on Southstein Highway um, and that's what we've done. Uh, we basically have taken um, the concept. Uh, the biggest ask, as you as you probably see here, is the what we're calling the friendly corridors program. Um, and friendly corridors is um, in two pieces. One, it's uh, it is engineering drawings which we will need. But two, it's the actual implementation of what we're calling that first phase on the South Dean Highway between Wells Road and Church Street. Um, it's the nice thing about that particular parcel is that um, it's right smack in the middle of the South Dean Highway. It has church on it, it has retail on it, it has school on it, it has a town council on it, I mean the uh, town uh, uh, hall on it. And what we want to do is to carry on a, in a, be a begin to develop a plan, an aesthetic and safety plan for South Dean Highway um, uh, that we think we wouldn't have any pushback from DOT, which is somebody that we still need to bring to the table. Uh, but it begins a process also that if the if the council likes it and the and the money is approved that we can take these plans and use them as a way forward and present and use the same engineering drawings for the state of Connecticut and say okay the town of Weathersfield has committed our funding to this particular project this is what we're doing to help um, increase increase the aesthetics and the safety of the South Dean Highway and we want to do this now in this sector and we can go block by block uh, on it. Um, that's the biggest change um, to the item. As I mentioned, um, we engulfed the amount of funding that was set aside uh, on marketing for uh, Leslie's uh, flag concept, banner concept, which was great. Uh, but we're just going to be incorporating, using those flags and incorporating into that particular block. So that's the biggest change here. All the other marketing items are there. This is not what I would call the end of what we would request from South Dean Highway, I would call it the beginning um, of what we're looking for. Uh, Cindy was been, um, I don't know if that was 4.0 or 5.0 on draft, Cindy, um, on the items that you did, but we, it's down to a, a very um, uh, insightful document that we can provide to the council if they have any additional questions regarding that particular area. Uh, we realize there are things that we'd love to do and there's things that we might possibly be able to do. And the idea is try to find that balance in between. So with that said, um, I'll just open it up and we'll just start if we, if, with the uh, items on this. We've also, as you can see, incre uh, increased the ask uh, for the facade improvement program as well. Um, we came up with the $172,000 number because basically that was left over after adding the 300 for the uh, friendly quarters project um, uh, and um, after the marketing asks that we had. Um, so why don't we just start with the facade improvement program. Any issues or concerns regarding that ask? Cindy? It's a general. Um, I, I'm having trouble pulling up the document. I didn't print it out. Do you want to share that? Uh, sure. I can do that. Oh, there you that, go. Julia? Yep. Yeah, Joy's got the, uh, she's got the power. Wow, that was fast, Joy. <laughs> um, so uh, the first ask was the replenishment of the facade improvement program to 172,000. Um, as you guys know it and as stated there, this is obviously our most valuable tool. Um, we do not expect to get any additional funding for several years on this particular item. We've made that really clear. Um, I don't expect any more steep money. It, it possibly could happen, but even more so now in light of the economy with oil and everything else is going on, I think these things get pushed a little bit farther back. Um, we do expect 
um, and this is a guesstimate, and I will share this as a guesstimate with the subcommittee, uh, of approximately $250,000 in potential asks. Um, we have two that are on the table that we believe each will take 50,000. And we're talking to a number of other company, uh, other business owners, property owners. Um, and we think that if they come uh, to fruition, we could have a $250,000 in worth of asks within the next 12 to 18 months. Um, what is any questions or concerns regarding that particular piece? I see no hands. Uh, I think I've got everybody on my screen. So we'll move to the next item. Um, Mark, I just want to interrupt for one second and let you know Bryce Hardy is on the line. He shows up as an iPhone, just in case okay. you are. Good morning, Bryce. Um, OK, so there we are on the <clears throat> ask for FIP. Uh, the next piece was our media and communications coordinator. I think this is one, and by the way, I just want to preface, guys, we may not get any of this. Um, I just need to be, you know, honest about it. You know, the there's been some, what I've seen is some pretty reasonable asks to the town council from different departments that have not made it through. Um, so the, the $600,000, again, is not our money. It's been set aside for us to, to bid on, so to speak, but we may not get any of these items. It depends on what the council wants to do. I'd hate to be the bearer. I, I don't like being negative, but this is not negative. It's just being um, logical. So I do want you guys to understand that. I did, if you want to go back to the first page, um, Troy, just for a second. If you look at the last line, uh, starting under the subcommittee meeting heading, we would ask that any non-approved request be applied to the facade improvement program. Um, that's our ask. I don't know whether or not we'll receive that. But that certainly is our ask that if something does get shot down, that is one area that we're hoping that we could um, have that money uh, uh, reinvested to. I'm sorry, Joe, if you could go to the media communications coordinator. Um, so the town, you know, we've made this case. This is where we uh, do suggest or we do think that we may get pushback on. We're going to make a very solid case again for it. Um, I did go through and basically listed every department in, the, in bold there. Uh, that would be responsible, that would all have input into this communications coordinator, um, parks and rec, fire department, board of ed, health, social services, emergency management, physical services, library, tax assessors, senior services, town manager, all of those divisions would, would take advantage of this media and communications coordinator. Um, and if you look at the very last two pieces in bold, um, we wanna share with the, with the council that again, after one year, an evaluation of the success of this position and any return on investment. So if in 12 months, Tom Carson and I talk and, and, and we realize that, you know, we got this grant or we got this developer came in town and we can show that th that, that position is paying for itself, we would make a, a another presentation, if you will, back to the council that this should be a full-time position. Um, Leslie, who's not on the call yet, um, did hear back from, uh, if you look at the very last piece, they're from Glastonbury, West Hartford, Manchester, Vernon, East Hartford, all have uh, a media and communications coordinator. I called yesterday into Rocky Hill, which didn't call back, and they have a, they have a specific department as well, um, for uh, which they call media and communications. Um, so we are surrounded by other communities that, are, that do see the value in that. We'll see whether or not um, uh, that's something that will go forward. But what I wanted to ask the, you guys, any issues or concerns regarding our ask for a media, media and communications director for 50,000? Cindy? Uh, only that if they, if you get pushback, maybe we can get a half time position. We can sort of come back with that. A half time position, part time? Yeah, part time. Okay, that's a good fallback. All right, I hear that. Anybody else have any questions or concerns regarding that ask? Judy? I think that because you're including, you're saying that this would handle all of those departments, I think you have a better chance than if you were just asking for EDIC. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I did, if I delivered the message properly or accurately the last time. I wanted them to understand that it, it never was our intention that it would be just EDIC, but if that came across, then I really, as you can tell, I really want to push it forward that it is not. This is for the entire town. Um, I don't think we could keep one person busy for $50,000 a year just on our stuff. Um, but that's a good point. And I will definitely drive that home. 
Any other questions regarding that particular ask or concerns? Okay, um, on to the Friendly Corridor uh, project. If you could scroll up on that a bit, Ms. Julia. Great. Um, so if I've made a very, I think I've, I've made enough of, uh, of information on my side. What questions or concerns uh, would you guys have on this particular ask, which is our biggest ask? Mark, I don't have any questions, um, but the, yesterday, I think it was, I was on that, happened to be on that corner when school was letting out. Someone's going to get hurt. Yep. Someone's definitely going to get hurt, and there's no crossing guard there. Um, so, yeah. So, anyways, I just wanted to voice that if anybody had any objections to it. It's really pretty <laughs> dangerous there. Well, there usually I, is a crossing guard there. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. yeah there, there was not. Yeah. I, and I was like going to see who I could reach out to say, you need a crossing guard there. The kids were just running in the, you know, they're kids. <laughs> Right. Was it the right. corner of church or the corner of Wells? Uh, church. Thank yeah. you for clarifying yeah. that. Okay. There. Yeah. Usually there is a crossing guard. So. Is there? Yeah. Okay. If you guys, I'll find Joya, out. If you could scroll down just for a second, Joya. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So that area right there, is, from a traffic calming perspective, is some of the stuff that we can do in those areas. Um. The other, you know, the, the the main concern, and I think, and I wanted to get some feedback from you, maybe Tony, you would be helpful on this, um, is, you know, we know all of these things are items that we can do. We've got a guesstimate from uh, from Derek that it could be anywhere from 20 to $25,000 a pole um, to put in the lighted poles. We're suggesting 10 lighted poles with flag banners between Wells and Church to light up purely just the west side of the Berlin Turnpike. The other side is too cluttered with telephone poles and, and everything else, but that would be the side that we would use. Um, but the, uh, the sense of uh, safety, I think is something that's really important here. And also the sense of community. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I'm just getting some feedback. Um, if you guys, uh, and also as part of the concept, if you could look at the Saint, the way it says St. James, that's a logo that could be in the center of the street. There's really anything you can do with regards to these intersections to add color, to add interest, um, uh, and to add safety all at the same time. Um, and these are some of the items that we're talking about. And Joy, if you could scroll back in the other way. The push, um, keep going if you don't mind. Right there is great. Um, so the, if you look under, uh, from an R ROI perspective, money invested in engineering renderings, the town will be able to use in two distinct ways. One of the pushbacks, if you guys were on the last call, is that they really had an issue on spending any more, any more money on any engineering renderings, et cetera. Um, they kept reviewing back to the Southstein Highway, which I think probably was, or not probably was unfair because that was a, a very kind of a overarching concept and not really target specific. This project is target specific. We are going from Wells to Church. And uh, to defend the engineering drawings, we're gonna say whatever we are able to use um, for this particular project, again, we should be able to use for other quadrants on the Southstein Highway as we move this particular concept forward, if that becomes the desire. Um, any questions um, or concerns regarding this particular piece? Um, Could I ask see, if, see. does this eliminate the gateway Flags? Um, uh, yes. Uh, if you're talking about the, the 250 flags, um, we can make an adjustment on that, Leslie. We absorb some of that in for Southstein Highway. It okay. still has the banners from Wells to Church. I'm sorry, you weren't on the call when I, when I mentioned that. That was the first thing I mentioned on what some of the changes were. And that's what I wanted to talk to you and the group about. Um, that was absorbed into this. We, if, that's, if there's a desire, to continue that particular concept forward, we certainly can adjust these numbers. Um, um, so it, does that answer your question? Thank you, yes. And do you have, and Leslie, do you have any concerns regarding that? Um, I thought they liked the gateway flags before. 
Okay. So maybe we could include those in the second, you know, phase of the flag department. I don't know, something like that. If there's a second step. Um, or we can try to incorporate it um, into this just by massaging, um, you know, we did ask, and I know you just hopped on, and, and I know you've seen the document because you worked on it with me. Um, and again, thank you. Um, the We are gonna ask that if there's any funding for any of the projects that aren't used that we, they go to facade improvement. We could ask that, you know, that as, as a second phase or as an alternate um, to this particular project, you know, that will flags, maybe we include it in this and say as an alternate um, um, to, now, granted, your ask, I think, was 25000 Is that right for the banners? Yeah, just for the banners that go on the poles. Right. Uh, okay. But that, we would have to still buy the poles, or they would go on an existing poles, as I recall. Is that right? I think we were thinking of existing poles. Okay. Got it. All right. You and I, will talk, we can talk about that. I All right. That we should put it in. Very good. Thank or you. make it a plan B, as you said. Um, we, we should consider that. Because I, I recall that they were interested in that. Yes, I think anything on South Dean Highway, um, to a degree, they had an interest in. So yeah, um, you, I think you're right there. And can you just confirm that was twenty five thousand, right? Correct. That, that's what we had before. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you, Leslie. Any other questions or concerns regarding this particular piece, Tom? So, so the estimate is that that we want to use the funds to purchase ten poles at a cost of twenty to twenty five thousand dollars a pole. So that would be two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars just for ten street lights. Um, that's that is Derek's estimate. I'm not sure if it's high or it's low. He said twenty to twenty five thousand is what he guessed at. Um, the issue is that there's trenching involved, et cetera, to get electricity to the poles. The poles themselves aren't the biggest expense. It's the, it's the trenching and whatnot to get electricity uh, to those particular poles. They would also have um, obviously the banners on them as well. But yes, um, it could be a, a, a sizable chunk. Um, uh, and that's why I wanna share that number with you guys. Yeah, because I, I you know, again, I mean, I've, I've always had a concern that, that, um, that it's more decorative than anything else. And, I'd much rather spend money. I mean, I know it's going to be a heavy lift, but just to turn to them and say, "Give us two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars for ten light poles," you you can really do so much more with that money if you invest it, and then you get a grant of that you know that's more encompassing, and then winds up paying for the light poles down the road. You know, so that's that's the biggest concern I have. That it's like I don't think ten light poles for two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars is. Um, would be a great expense, you know, and that, and I don't even know if you could do anything, <clears throat> you know, then you're out of money to do any, anything else to address any kind of safety concerns. You know, you put in a textured crosswalk or, you know, curb bump outs or any of that other stuff. I mean, I don't, I really don't think that we should be, I know they want us to settle. I don't think we should settle. I mean, I think we should keep pushing and say, we need to, you know, there's a lot of money at stake here to do real improvements, not just cosmetic improvements and, and, and decorative things. And um, that's just a big chunk of, of money for, for I, don't th I don't think, for a real benefit based on the way that road looks right now. Judy, thank Maybe you. Maybe you should add into the uh, document the uh, risk for uh, students crossing the street at Church Street, you know, that is, I, I think that should maybe be a priority rather than banners, um, that safety should be, I, I just think that should be number one. Yeah, uh, we, can, we, can, we can highlight that. Um, we do mention safety and aesthetics, but I think having an actual bullet point on that particular area is good. Um, Tom, I just wanna address what you said because I don't, I don't disagree with anything that you're saying. Um, it's, it would be hard not to agree with what you're saying. The issue that we've got is that either we, we, it's not a matter of settling. If they veto what we ask for, and that's our last ask, the money will go someplace else in town. Um, so it's not necessary. I know 
it's what we what we would like to do versus what we can do. And again, trying to find that happy medium. If I thought there was a second, we could go back for a third ask. I mean, they gave, they're giving us a second ask, no, or a second opportunity. No one else in the in town has gotten a second opportunity to go back. Um, mm -hmm. We're the actually the only the only ones, mm -hmm. um, at least as of last week, unless that's changed. So I don't mm -hmm. disagree, um, and it's not just that. And and look, if it has to be uh, eight lights, and we have to um, and manipulate and move the funds around. I think Derek's estimate, I know those polls are three to $4,000. So I don't know if there's $20,000 a poll for the construction side, but in engineering, you never underestimate, you overestimate. Um, so if it ends up being $20,000 a poll, that leaves us $100,000 left um, for park benches, bus areas. And it's not just those other items. The other items, if you can scroll up um, a bit, Joya. Um, it's, out, and again, just the continuation of those lights that are at Wells and Church right now, textured crosswalks, park benches, bus shelters if applicable, um, approved wayfinding and signage, tree and planting is allowed by DOT. So there are other items on there um, that we like uh, to consider. So unless, and I guess here's the issue guys, um, if, if there's an issue with regards to that ask and the group decides and votes that that is not the right area to spend the money. Um, we either have to come up quickly with a, a solid plan B um, or uh, with, the, in under, with an understanding that um, the council was not excited about anything else that we were talking about the last time that we included anything above and beyond any aesthetic and, and safety aspects of the highway. I'll be, I'll be more than happy to modify this and change it. I just am concerned that we don't get anything. Is it just, is it aesthetics? Yes. But aesthetics, if you paint a house that looks crappy and then you paint the house, it looks better and it's better for the neighborhood. You know, I'm thinking that the aesthetic approvals that we make on Southstein Highway do give us that sense of place, um, do make it feel more comfortable. Um, we're hoping that these areas for safety do have some traffic calming effects. Um, but that's, that's kind of the grim reality. Either we can um, either we have to come up with something that we can present for Thursday um, or we to get what we can try to get. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Deb. Um, so I'm I'm a little confused. So if let's just say they reject this full flag poll thing, uh, do can do we have an opportunity to present a plan B? I thought you said we would not have an opportunity. No, no, we would not have an opportunity. I uh, well, I'm going. I just know that there we're. I think we're the last division or last entity to be approved because we got a second wave. We could ask for a third one. And I guess I shouldn't say no. I don't know that for a fact that they could say, okay. yes, we could come back again. That is a possibility. Uh, so but do, you, I, do you think we would, we would be negotiating against ourselves if we presented a plan B at this time? Is that negotiating against ourselves? Um, I guess you could view it that way. It depends on what the, I guess the second ask was. Um, I just hate to lose the money. That's all. <laughs> I'm, and again, they may reject our concept, this, this concept, if, if we, if we, if you guys approve it, they may reject it as well. Um, and we lose the money the, what's happened guys is in, 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 I'm not, I'm just going to talk reality. It's not politics. Um, there has been vast amounts of other projects that have come out from other, the other divisions that, you know, out of the woodwork that may have more uh, strength than our proposal, uh, according to the town council. Um, so the original amount of money of $600,000 that was allocated to us may not be the amount of money that they feel as though we uh, deserve to get. Other projects have come up uh, that may take a precedent um, or uh, move ahead from a um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, more favor, more favorable projects other than the ones that we're proposing. Um, so it could happen. Um, they could reject all of this. So, um, it, but I, let me go on record again. We could get a third at bat. Um, let the Deb. We could certainly ask, uh, but I don't know whether or not we would or not. Tony raised his hand. Tony. You're still on mute, Mr. Martino. Okay, sorry about that. 
Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for something for aesthetic and safety, uh, if you think about when we met a couple of weeks ago with the people from close Jensen and Miller, one of the things they suggested was the uh, uh, imprinted crosswalks, uh, which uh, you got the picture of for Church Street. Uh, I mean, when you look at that picture, you can see that it's you know decorative, eye appealing, and maybe you know instead of the decorative lights, we look to do more crosswalks along the Silestine Highway because they said it's a calming uh, factor for drivers and slows them down. And that might be an easier sell with uh, the council versus, you know, looking for lights. And the fact that uh, the guy from Close Jensen and Miller said that you know, it would probably be an easy sell through DL, uh, DLT, which is something we're gonna have to get approval on for whatever we do. It's a good point. Um... It, I guess if we feel as though that it's starting to slide, because between the two, if I had to pick aesthetics or, or, or safety, obviously I think all of us would probably vote for safety, I would assume. Um, so and I this would do both. Yeah, yeah. Good point, Tony, thank you. Cindy also raised her hand. <clears throat> Cindy, oh, I didn't see that, I'm sorry, Cindy. Yeah, um, I, um, yeah, I have a question because, I mean, I understood that this was, going to be, uh, we're going to put together this project and then we're going to ask for money. And the idea is that we have a plan and that when it, uh, we have the engineering renderings, we can go out and ask for sources of money. And that was kind of the ROI in it. And um, um, I'm not sure why. I would You're breaking up, Cindy. I'm sorry. pay for this if we can ask Indeed. federal, you know, other federal dollars and then we got approved. Uh, in a Cindy, I'm sorry, you, you, broke so, I mean, about, I, you broke up for about 30 seconds, Cindy, I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, what I'm saying is, um, I think we need to articulate that we wanna go forward with asking for federal and state dollars. And that's part of our plan. And that I think is also part of the ROI that when we have uh, engineering renderings and we have a, a way forward and we articulate that, we can get those funds. So I, it doesn't hurt us to say that and we may get it and we should try to look for that in the meantime and, and make applications. Um, so th th I think th that's what we need to do um, to make it more appealing. Okay. Um, I agree. So Cindy, just to, I want to make sure I clearly understand what you're saying is um, obviously as part of this proposal, we are saying use these uh, engineering renderings as a way forward for additional funding for additional projects, either similar to or different from, is that what you're saying? I'm saying um, I understood we were going to get the engineering renderings as a way to get other uh, external qualify for external funding. Yes. So the idea that we're just going to at the first, you know, and that was in every other previous proposal. Yes. And part of what the engineering value was, was to help us in this process and to represent us and to be at the table um, uh, and to help with, with proposals and also be at, you know, have an expertise at, at the, uh, um, you know, mobility study and other places. Uh, but I mean, I don't know that we should, as a first step forward, saying, "Oh yeah, we'll pay for that." It, I mean, why wouldn't we try to get the funds first, and then have you know, if we can't get the funds, well, then those any additional um, you know, we can go ahead and fund, let's say, the crosswalks uh, on our own, <coughs> you know, with the part of this uh, three hundred thousand dollars funding. So it seems like that's it's attractive too from a budget point of view. We get more more dollars, and that's they're always looking for ROI. And to me, the value or the ROI value in the previous proposals was, hey, we have these our, these engineering renderings. Now we can go forward and ask for money because we know what we want, and we're showing you what we want. Right, um, but we haven't accomplished that at this point. Would you agree with that? On on 
I mean, we they vetoed us with regards to any engineering renderings in that last meeting. I'm I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just not sure. Maybe other, uh, I'm just not so sure. You're exactly. saying, in other words, but I thought what we said, and and Bonnie made very clear, we don't have the in-house in expertise uh, to develop the engineering renderings, to develop the, where the crosswalks is. To, uh, um, but maybe what you're saying is these are so simple that you order the <laughs> you order the lights and you stick them in, you know, you do what you need to do to stick them in the ground. And maybe we don't need an engineering rendering. Maybe they can do it in house. Is that what you're saying? All this is no. done in house? No, um, what I'm saying is part of the 300,000, a very small percentage of that would be used for engineering renderings, actual drawings, electrical drawings. Um, you know, if park benches have to go into a spot or bus areas or the, or the bump outs or the crosswalks, all those would be engineered out um, uh, to follow. And we're, we're not asking Derek to do it. Part of the proposal in that, um, if you could scroll to the top to that, Julia, again, under the ask. Engineering, as you can see there, friendly corridor, engineering design and installation, both. We're looking to do both the engineering design of it, which we would get from an organization like Close Jensen and Miller. We'd have, obviously have to go to bid, but we would use those drawings as a way to use to to move forward this particular area. So I, I don't think any do I think lights on the Southstein Highway is a earth shattering change to the Southstein Highway? No. Do I think it's a, a great improvement? Yes. Um, uh, and if it's money that we can use to get that same sense of place along the entire the Southstein Highway, then that's very positive for the way just the entire Southstein Highway looks, which is one of the things that uh, Mr. D'Amico talked about way back when was, you know, was the look of the Southstein Highway. Um, well, I maybe mean, there just should be a line in there that says, uh, you know, we will uh, use in-house um, resources to apply for federal and state grants. If we don't get those grants and we we'll use the, the remainder of the funds to uh, make the uh, improvements. Um, so you're saying that we would go, we would say that the, the, the town engineer and the engineering department would be the ones to do the drawings? Is that what you're saying? No, no. I'm saying we would, we would have the external um, resources to do the engineering drawings because we don't have the resources in town. Yep. And we apply for grants and we, we could, let's say we'll do the, a portion of it will be done let's say in-house and, but we will also try to get grants um, as well. Okay. What I would ask uh, Cindy, if you could put down um, in writing specifically what you would like to see incorporated so we can review it. We do need to tidy this document up and, and have it ready uh, for Thursday, uh, which is our next meeting, as you know. Um, uh, Tony, you had raised your hands as, as well. Uh, I already talked on what I have. Oh. All right, your hand's still up. You're still still oh, present. Okay. Sorry. Any questions? That. Any questions or comments regarding this? I know that this is not a perfect. Oh, Judy, go ahead. I just want to ask: Savage Park is that open area between Christ the King Parish and what will soon be the Cosmetology uh, Center? Yes. You know. That is a, a little piece of heaven there that could be really developed. And, and I think that saying that in this plan a little bit more clearly, that that could be an area of relief for the eyes, you know, with landscaping and that should be where the park benches go and things like that. I think we need to concentrate on that a little bit more because that's a little gem in that open, in that vast wasteland of concrete. Mm -hmm. So the just embellish a little bit more or just make what it says. Yes, what, I would that, make that much more uh, obvious that that's one of the things that we could do with. OK, if, if that's the case. Yeah. OK, very good. I say uh, just one more one more thing about. Um, just trying to keep pushing a little bit more because I think it's it's a constant education effort. And I wouldn't just sort of say you get pushback from one member of the council or two members of the council on a subcommittee and then the whole thing is dead. Um, there are, you know, there are nine people on that council and 
they're can be pretty open minded when you start sort of explaining you know to them what what we're talking about and and we all saw that presentation that DOT gave and I I took a capture of the the um the powerpoint just because there are I, I calculated 13.5 billion dollars in in grant opportunities that we can try to get a very very tiny fraction of one of them is a new safe streets and roads for all grant it says for local governments to improve safety and reduce crashes in local communities that's five billion dollars from the federal government new reconnecting communities grants for planning design demolition and reconstruction of street grids parks divided by transportation infrastructure one billion dollars raise grants for projects of local or regional significance formerly there were the tiger or the build grant 7.5 billion dollars that the biggest fear that i have is we're that's all we're going to miss out on all of that unless somebody is pushing to try to get access to it and i think we would be the only ones doing it right now you know in some sort of a document and they keep banging the drum to try to get somebody to listen that in order to get that we need to invest we need some help you know uh consulting help to get that money so that's i mean i would put that in there that there's 3.13.5 .5 billion dollars in federal grants because that's the other thing missing from this document mark because we we talk about going to the state of connecticut going to the state of connecticut going to the state of connecticut we need to say federal funding federal funding federal funding you know and and just so it starts to dawn on people would tom i would ask you um uh can you put that particular um information or that document in, in an email we can include that in this um again um i'm not saying that this is a great um you know this is not bike lanes it's not bus areas you know dedicated bus lanes it's not a lot of the stuff that the traffic and coming that we want but it is potentially a start um, and I think I'm hearing a thought here or, or hearing kind of a theme that the plan B on that 300 might be uh, the Christ the King Church um, uh, park area, along with the safety aspect, um, uh, um, the crosswalks and whatnot, that if there are issues regarding, you know, the lighting aspect that we can go back and, and go for those other ancillary things um, if we have to. Is that fair? Okay, good. Any other questions on the friendly corridor? Well, I just want to second Tom's, you know, idea that you know we need to really impress on them that this uh, moment will be lost, and if we don't have a plan, if we don't have an idea, ideas going forward, um, and we're going to lose out on a lot of opportunities. And this is the time; the time is right. Um, if if then this is something that we can add either at the beginning, probably at the beginning of this piece and talk about, you know, this is the funding that we're requesting now, but there is X amount of dollars that are available that there at one point there needs to be consideration for engineering drawings. The problem right now, guys, is asking for that right now is just gonna throw a wet blanket on us. They were really, you guys were on the call. Um, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to lead with that. I know we can keep fighting, but the, the clock is ticking. Um, and if we go back to them with something that they rejected out of hand this last time, I think we were shooting ourselves in the foot. And, and I know that's not our intention. Um, so I guess that's the concern um, that I have. But I think if, if we're not being forceful enough or communicating enough, uh, we can add that information to this document and put it right at the beginning. But if we make that part of our ask right now, I think we will lose. I think we will lose. Um, I'm not. Uh, you guys know me, or maybe you don't know me as well, but I am, I don't like to lose and I'm a hopeless optimist, but I'm trying to be just realistic based on the data that those guys gave us on that last call. Um, any other questions or concerns regarding South Dean Highway? All right, guys, onward and upward. It is 9-12. Video commercial marketing, any questions or concerns on that ask? We're gonna obviously keep that in here. Okay. Um, community gift card for 13,000, that's still in here, which was part of our marketing ask. Any questions or concerns regarding that? Leslie? Sorry, sorry I'm late here, but- um... Hey Bonnie. 
marketing, do not spend a lot of time on marketing. You've made your point, stick with the rest of that money. Yep. Um, I mean, right now, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. After you got off, they do not like this gift card and they do not like the uh, social media. So um, just, but don't dwell on marketing. You've done your pitch. You now have to move on and make that pitch um, for the other things that you really need. But okay, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'll tell you right now, I, don't, I think those two don't survive. Okay. Bonnie, um, what do you think their appetite is as we ask if, if they don't approve those that we can include those into facade improvement? I think the biggest issue you have uh, possibly with that is you've already asked for money through capital. You've already asked for money through, um, I think the regular budget. I got to get my numbers straight. Um, I think our only money is from CIP. I think, Bonnie, we, it's not in our budget. Well, you've, I'm sorry, no, it's ARPA. So you've asked for that as a different packet. So I don't know if they're gonna throw much more. I mean, you certainly could ask if that's important, but you're gonna have to have um, the proof to say, these are the people we know are gonna do it. Yeah. And you can't just do guesswork. So I don't know. Well, yeah, I guess my... Go ahead, Judy. <laughs> Can we just take out the gift card uh, and put that money into one of the other areas? I think the video marketing is is very important. And the no, immediate... I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry. It's not the video commercial as much as the social the media. Person. Social media. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very important. Um, uh, so the community gift card is that what you're saying? We should just maybe reallocate that at this yeah, point. I, I think that that's a little bit of fluff. Okay. Um, well, I think we were at a weird number for the facade improvement. We could add that to facade improvement and just include that and they asked there. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Uh, just to give some insight on the community gift card, I reached out to a, a, a cousin of mine who owns a business in Middletown who does this program as well. And he, although does receive some of those gift cards from time to time, he thinks it's used a lot for like uh, gifts from within the town. So it's going to, you know, um, they're, they're more for gifts. So I'm not, he's not even sure that a lot of the money is actually coming into the town to then go disperse that amount. So um, I agree that the community gift card is a little bit of a flush fluff type of a uh, thing at this point. The video commercial, I, I did write an email. Um, I think that video commercial is a great idea, but I think Weathersfield in general gets a lot of uh, TV time as it is. And to kind of allocate that money into something a little bit more important um, could be uh, a positive, especially into the social media. I think getting getting the uh, what our town is doing into our town's people's literal hands and their phones is a, a, is a benefit. And I think um, if you did find someone who was really good at that position. There's a lot of ways to kind of um, spend money into apps and things like that. So I think um, the commercial, although is a is fun, might not be the best use of that money. Okay. Thank you, Bryce. So um, uh, let's just take a, a raise of hand. Should we um, reallocate the community gift card program? Raise your hand if you think that's a good idea. All right, that will do. Uh, regarding video commercial marketing, raise your hand if you'd like to still keep it. And raise your hand if you'd like to get rid of it. This is the, the video commercial you're saying? Yes, yep. All right. I, I, I would see that if this was um, something that we could put into a, you know, a tourism budget, you know, the, for the Heritage Commission or something, rather than not necessarily an economic development thing, you know, then I could see it. If, 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 if we're both going to be, you know, have a, a role in the way that those things are developed, whatever they are, um, then I would be, um, then I would be more in favor of it, I think. Judy or Bonnie, do you guys see another, a better use for the video and commercial, the video aspect or commercial aspect, other than EDIC? Judy, I mean, I'm from tourism. 
Yeah, uh, tourism has talked about that. And unfortunately, you know, budgets have been tight, but um, I do think that the uh, media, uh, social media is so essential today. And believe me, I'm not the techiest person on earth, but I do know that that's how you get to people. People don't even have uh, phone numbers anymore. Everything's online. And uh, I think if we could take maybe some of that video, take out the video and commercial and make that part of the, the media, the social media, that might help. And maybe put part of it towards um, the lampposts. Okay. Um, I th the based on what Bonnie is sharing me, I'm going to put a big push on on the on the communications person as well. I don't want to beat a dead horse, uh, but I do want to plead our case on that. I think if we add more money to it, Judy, it could be dangerous if they're already kind of risking. They're 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 not that excited about it now. Um, so at this point, um, let's just take again a vote. Who would like to keep the commercial marketing at the 20? And again, we can use this anywhere. It could be used for tourism and whatnot. It can be allocated to that area. Just put a hand up if you'd like to keep it as is. I, just one more time. And who this would like the to- video. Um, this is the videos? Yes. All right, so it's three yeses. And who would not like to see it? Please raise your hand. I don't really feel that. I don't really feel that strongly. Strongly either way on it, to be honest with okay. you. Okay. So you're doing this. You're not doing this or this. You're here. All right. Well, uh, the the majority has it. It stays as it is. Uh, but we have elected to eliminate the community gift card, and we okay reallocating that towards facade improvement. Please raise your hand if you're good with that. All right. That's majority. Okay. Uh, onward. Permanent garbage cans. If you want to scroll, Miss Joya. Any questions or concerns regarding that ask? They are going to ask you who's going to pick up the garbage because they are not going to pay to have this done on the weekends. So um, I'm going to tell you that's a dead end right now It because they're not going to give any. We just had another discussion about this, about a different topic. And I'm telling you, the votes are not there to pay people to spend time picking up the trash. OK. Mark, maybe, uh, you know, I know we had a quick discussion the other day. Maybe it is something that, you know, instead of uh, 10 cans, you have to find the business owners that are going to be responsible enough to, to empty them by themselves and take that. I don't know. I don't know how how you force them to do that. But, uh, you know, maybe that's the discussion we have to have with some business owners. I heard that there was there was an issue it being a potential union issue on emptying it. Yes, is that there is because they get paid to do that and they will file a grievance saying you are taking away our work because they're going to try to force the overtime on the weekends. Bonnie, I would say that the union has no uh, leg to stand if it went on the Charles parking lot or, or the par Charles property, if it went on. Um, yes, you're right. You know, all, all the properties. So if we went to the, the owners and said, hey, we've got these beautiful trash cans, try to keep all weather so beautiful. Uh, will you help us out and, and explain the situation? The union doesn't have a leg to stand. Yeah, but it would have to be on private property. It can't be on public property. Right. Well, then that's maybe part of our ask um, in saying in light of we understand physical service is maxed out and they can't do it. I go, if these are placed on private property, we will ask the owner to, to be responsible for it. Um, and the only way we will do is if they sign a document to say that they'll be responsible for emptying it and we'll just go on private property. So it... If it's on private property, does the town empty them during the week? No. No. That's, no, that's I, I just, point. Yeah, that's I just wanted to clarify that for everybody. Yeah, that's what I um, assumed. One last item, Bonnie, um, and, or, and others. Could that be incorporated into what we pay pains to do? They're going to pay for it. Not, well, let me think about this. No, I don't think council will ever go with that if it's on private property. But you have to remember, pains. Paints has to pick up only the kind of barrels that are out on the streets. They do not have a service that picks up fancy trash cans. The so trucks no are made for no, that. No manual labor is what you're saying? No. Uh -uh. All right, guys. So um, um, are you? we'll take by vote. I'd like to edit the permanent garbage cans and say these will be placed on private property and it will be up to the owners to, to wait, handle wait, wait. the maintenance hold, of them. Hold up. 
Bryce, do you know who's who's the head of the old Shopkeepers Association? Do you know now? Yeah, we Joe Pascal is our kind of acting president, and um, I'm also the vice president. So I mean, you know, um, so yes, I know that's. And I'm sorry, Joe owns. Joe Pascal is a chiropractor down in the bar in Buzz Willard. Okay. Bar. Okay. Thank you. I left a couple messages for him at his at his office, and I think he was closed, and I haven't heard back from him. Um, yeah. So again, uh, uh, we talked about Melinda from Circa Antique. Actually, her, her and Peter worked really hard last fall to try to get cans in there, and there was um, there was some you know, movement there. Um, it didn't really come to fruition because of some of these um, I, things because of, you know, who's going to pick it up and what's going to happen there. Um, I know she was pick. I know she was taking the, there's, I think one trash can in front of village pizza, which is, I mean, and she was, you know, emptying that thing five, six times a day. Um, and that, that landlord was working really well with her to make, you know, to allow that to happen. But, um, you know, there's a real need for garbage cans in old Weathersfield. I mean, it's, it's, you know, every day it's my job or I give it to somebody to go around my property and pick up litter, um, especially during COVID. It was it was a constant mask pickup. And, you know, we're really lucky that we have really great events with Bicycles on Main and, and all these things that are about to come up. And, uh, you know, there's an absolute need for garbage. And I really think it's it's disappointing that there's this like who's going to pick up the garbage talk. But, you know. I, I'd be happy to do that as just one business owner in town, but you know, I, I think it's a really important thing for in for it's really important. I mean, otherwise our community is just going to become trash. <laughs> but if this is going to be the downfall of this package, maybe we ought to take it out and look at it later, maybe from tourism point of view, from heritage. Uh, and because I don't want to lose everything just because we don't have somebody to pick up the trash. And the other thing is, what if a business agrees to it and then sells or transfers hands and the new person doesn't want to participate? Right. So, guys, um, do we just next it? I mean, if it's if it's a. If twenty thousand dollars is going to keep us from getting six hundred thousand, then I'm not sure if it's all that important. Well, I I don't think that's I don't think it'll prevent us from getting the six hundred. They may just say we don't like the idea and and you can't have it. I don't think our, it would make anything else in jeopardy. They're they're not going to they they don't have to buy this concept this document in whole. They can pick and choose what they like, obviously, and I, which I think they will. Um, you know, I I don't necessarily want to give up the ghost on this. Um, you know, if we get it allocated and we don't use it, but we have time to go back to the to the owners of the properties right now. And you're right, Judy. Somebody may not want to do it. I don't know why they wouldn't, uh, but you're right. It could happen. It's a possibility. But if we put this in the hands of the of the business community and say, look, you need garbage cans, we're willing to put put them here. You got to empty them. If you don't want to empty it, then we won't put one in front of your building. Um, I mean, maybe that's the tap. You know, another thing that we were talking about last fall is that. Um, we were going to, they were actually, we couldn't find the funding from the town. It wasn't in the budget. What we were going to do is business owners were going to go out and, and purchase these on our own. And we were going to have them logoed with, you know, this garbage brought to you by, you know, the Charles, um, you know, so I think there are some creative ways we can get behind it. My other question, Bonnie, is, you know, we do have garbage behind the firehouse that, you know, that is so somewhat public. Is that something that you think the town would be able to, you know, if, if, if I take my garbage bag and bring it over there, so it's not a cost to my, gar my garbage, I'm just trying to think out loud with, you know, some of the problems that might business owners might have. Is that something uh, that you think would happen? Uh, I don't know. Let me think it out, Bryce. Let me write it down and I'll think about this. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, if we could bring a bag or two or three a week over there and I don't know, I mean, we're talking, you know, in the, in the long run, one garbage can in front of my restaurant is not going to produce a ton of garbage, but overall on the whole street on these busy weekends, you know, there's, there's a substantial amount of change. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is like a larger issue for the town council to decide because you need public 
waste receptacles. And right. the more, you know, you're going to be putting a brewery down there. You're going to be putting a takeout pizza restaurant down there, the pizza boxes. There's going to be more and more and more. And if this is something you got to work out with town staff to work on a Saturday or Sunday, to, and then it's always been an issue down at the Cove as well, but you need places for people to throw stuff out. And we shouldn't just sort of leave it up to the property owners necessarily, you know, it might just be something that the town will have to suck up at some point. And I think and you're I right. Think, Tom, with the for, Go ahead. I think for small businesses, Bryce, you may be able to do that because you have additional staff, but for somebody that owns a small business and they've got stuff piling up in front of their uh, business, I, I think this is opening a can of worms. Cindy, you have your hand up? Well, just to say that, I mean, I, th I think we should ask for it. And then uh, we, there's a recognition. Cindy, we can't hear you. You're breaking need, up. And we understand that before we actually spend the monies that the, the owners have signed, you know, signed on to the fact that they're going to deal with it in some way or another. Um, so we just work out the details before we actually purchase the, um, the trash cans. I agree. We can add in. We understand there could be a physical services issue or whatnot. These are the ideas that we have. We'd like to have the money allocated. These are the potential solutions. If we can't figure it out, then the money goes back to the general fund or whatever. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. okay. Why don't you just add a disclaimer on there uh, in cooperation with local businesses? Okay, yeah, I mean, something, we're gonna add that and a couple other points too, that either maybe the town does, I mean, if they make garbage, they gotta empty it. We can't help it. Um, I think it's not, this is almost like a human right. It's not a, this isn't an ask, we're just trying to keep garbage off the ground um, here. This isn't rocket science. All right, um, so who, uh, please raise your hand if we're okay, keeping it as is with those additional um, items added. All right, we're good. Last but not least, traffic calming measure in Old Weathersfield. Um, any questions or concerns or comments regarding that? Um, I, I have a question and maybe a concern, but now where did, where did this come from? Um, because there's already quite a bit of sign pollution down on Main Street and having a lighted up sign flashing speeds. I mean, there, there's, a, there's, a, I, I mean, I, I understand where there, there a benefit i would almost rather put it down on marsh street when you're coming off the highway because that's when you're really cruising um but would, in order to control traffic in neighborhoods you really need to do it through street design you don't do it through a flashing sign sometimes and so i, I you know i'm just curious as to where this came from this came out of a conversation um who is the chief of the fire department um help me bonnie anthony um, anthony rich bailey. no rich bailey Talking about traffic calming down there, I talked with the mayor at one point on putting potentially temporary um, speed bumps in that area, which they didn't like. Um, I, I have just seen people going past the Charles and being over at um, um, the intersection uh, coming up into a church where people uh, coming from motor vehicles <laughs> drive excessively fast. Um, so this is, that flashing light is, it can be modified to just say what you're doing where it's not flashing. It will just say, here's your speed. And, but you can set it where it goes 30, 30, 30, 30, or it just comes up one thing. I agree. It could be garish if it's not done properly. Uh, but there, there is a lot of traffic issues in, in that sector and people are speeding pretty significantly, especially between um, Garden Street um, up to uh, past, uh, up past uh, Bryce's place. That area there is very fast. But um, if you, had, you guys have questions or concerns on it, um, this is something we can add or, 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 or delete. Um, but we're just looking for something to, to calm traffic down in that particular section. Yeah, I'm just, I'm more of a fan of re-engineering roads in order to calm traffic <laughs> because you, you wind up driving, you know, stuff that I read about, you wind up driving at speeds that you're comfortable with. If somebody's driving 50 miles an hour down there heading towards the cove, I don't know if a flashing sign is really gonna do anything for them. Um, but I, you know, and they're also, you know, they're re-engineering the corner of Maine and Hartford Ave right now. So they're putting in, a, that's gonna be a three-way stop 
So they'll slow down there. Um, but I think it's an issue really further down on Main Street by the Cove um, when it really gets narrow. Um, you know, so, but I don't know if they would want to sign down there. But I mean, uh, I just wondered if this came from the engineering department, if this is something engineering department. No, it did not. Did. No, engineering. In fact, I think originally there was a request for Ford and Sarah Derek said, absolutely not. I don't know. I personally, I'm, I'm not sure this is worth the money. You don't have any proof to back you up. No, I, I would say it's, I would say as a police officer, it's not definitely not worth the money. No, they, they are started. They started engineering the roads over by the Charles. They had the crosswalk. It narrows down. It slows people down. If we did that throughout Old Weathersfield, it would keep the integrity, and we wouldn't have these flashing signs in Old Weathersfield. I don't think that's. Uh, I guess I you know. And quite honestly, and I'm sure we're all guilty of this. I go buy signs like that and I go, oh, all right, okay. I'll, I'll reduce two miles. Okay, pass sign, here I go, I'm back up. But I don't know how much they really do. And they do. No, we know how you sense. drive by. Oh, I drive. I don't <laughs> drive like people here, they're nuts here. <laughs> um, so let's take a vote on, on adding or, or deleting. Who votes to delete the traffic calming? Raise your hand. Okay, majority has it, it's out. Um, that will go away. Okay, so um, I have to make the, I have to leave for the airport guys, I apologize. Um, I know that we had a couple of things here. We wanna add um, some uh, additional disclaimer to the permanent garbage cans uh, on, with regards to getting a civic involvement or business involvement, I should say. Um, if you could send me the information that you guys were talking to Tom, that particular piece, regarding the uh, billions of dollars available. I think we should make mention in this document um, and we'll make those changes. With those changes, guys, um, uh, we need to get a vote on whether or not we should move forward with adding those particular items before we take it uh, on Thursday. So we do need to take a vote. Um, I don't think this is perfect, but I think it's as close as we can get at the hour. Um, uh, but that's just my humble two cents. Um, and. How do you feel with the changes that we're suggesting and the ads that we're going to put in that we move forward on, on this document? Raise your hand. Okay, we're good to go. Um, Tom, please forward me that data. Um, uh, I think, um, and we will delete the traffic calming um, item and we will add the disclaimers on the garbage cans. Uh, there was one other piece and I know I'm missing another disclaimer on something. What was the other item guys? I would like to improve that section about the Savage Park, you know, boost that up oh, a little yes, bit. Oh, yes, that's what it was. Yep. Judy, can you do me a favor? Because I literally have to run up to my car and go to the airport. I will Fish send you email. something. Yep. Awesome. All right. If you All want right, counsel, if you want counsel to read it um, before the meeting, then I need it by tomorrow. Okay. I'll work it on, on, on the plane. If you guys could send me all that stuff, that would be great. Thanks, Mark. Guys, thanks for all your right. time. Safe Mark. travel. Thank you. Joya, did you take all those notes? You have them all? You're muted. <laughs>